Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Hebner, founder of the Arizona Center for Chronic Pelvic Pain. If you or your loved one suffers from pelvic pain, you've likely been searching for a specialized practice to get help. For the past 20 years, our center has been focused exclusively on treating women and men with pelvic pain, setting us apart from many other practices that see patients for a variety of other conditions. One of the common conditions that I treat is endometriosis. It is a disease where the tissue typically present in the uterine cavity starts growing on the outside. During the menstrual period, that tissue bleeds and causes significant pain. Treatment of endometriosis starts with excellent surgery. I perform complete resection and not ablation, removing the entire disease and stripping the peritoneal membrane if necessary. I do this using a Da Vinci surgical robot, which I have been using since 2002. This is longer than most of the surgeons in the United States since I had access to this revolutionary technology during my training at the Mayo Clinic under legendary surgeon Dr. Javier Magrina. For many years, I myself have been teaching robotic surgery to residents, fellows, and practicing physicians. In fact, in 2007, I had done more robotic surgeries than any other surgeon in the world, and I continue to perform many of those procedures every year. I perform surgical removal of all visible endometriosis, including lesions on the bowel, bladder, ureters, and diaphragm. Additionally, if necessary, I address endometriosis around pelvic nerves. For patients experiencing significant menstrual cramping, I offer presacronorectomy, a procedure designed to disrupt nerves running to the uterus. The comprehensive treatment of endometriosis extends beyond addressing the condition itself. In a book chapter I authored, I delve into associated conditions that contribute to pelvic pain. These include bladder pain, also known as interstitial cystitis, irritable bowel syndrome, and most significantly, spastic pelvic floor syndrome. I affectionately refer to this quartet of conditions as the evil quadruplets. While many practices focus on endometriosis, we stand out by addressing all four of these interconnected diseases. Our practice is most renowned for its expertise in treating pudendal neuralgia. This condition involves pain or numbness in areas innervated by the pudendal nerve. In women, it encompasses the clitoris, labia, vagina, perineum, and rectum, while in men, it affects the penis, scrotum, perineum, and rectum. Pudendal nerve entrapment is a condition caused by scar tissue, ligaments, or surgical material compressing the nerve, and it all often triggers the pain symptoms. Traumatic events to the pelvis, such as vaginal deliveries, falls, sport injuries, injuries during sexual activity, or cycling on a narrow saddle, can begin this pain. Key symptoms include worsened pain while sitting, and the relief when laying down, standing, or sitting on the toilet seat. Women experience severe pain during intercourse, while men may have penile numbness, erectile dysfunction, and pain during ejaculation. Additionally, patients may experience discomfort with bowel movements and urination. Among the most debilitating symptoms in women is persistent genital arousal, a sensation akin to the pre-orgasmic feeling that persists indefinitely. Men often experience numbness in the penis and scrotum along with difficulty in achieving an erection. Some individuals also suffer from a condition known as heart flaccid, where the penis remains partially erect without ever becoming fully rigid or completely flaccid. This condition may result from compression of the pudendal nerve or pudendal vessels. In managing patients with pudendal neuralgia, I consistently observe significant spasm of the pelvic floor muscles. These spasms are main concern, but I'll revisit that topic shortly. Our non-surgical treatments for pudendal neuralgia encompass physical activity, nerve blocks, and amniotic allograft injections. 
the amniotic allograft derived from the placenta can potentially aid in nerve regeneration. However, patients with truly compressed nerve required nerve decompression surgery. In 2005, I traveled to Nantes, France to learn pudendal nerve decompression surgery directly from the inventor of the transgluteal technique, Professor Roger Robert. I'm the sole surgeon in the United States who has received this training from the renowned Professor Robert. Over the past 19 years, I have performed over 300 transgluteal pudendal neurolysis surgeries, significantly modifying the original procedure. Utilizing a microscope, wrapping the nerve to prevent scar tissue formation, and implanting pain pumps have all improved surgical outcomes. While very few surgeons perform pudendal neurolysis, patients from around the world travel to Arizona specifically for this procedure performed by me. Pelvic congestion syndrome, which may develop after pregnancy, results from the engorgement of pelvic veins. This is another condition frequently treated in our practice. The veins can become engorged around the uterus and ovaries, leading to a sensation of heaviness. They may also affect the branches of the pudendal nerve, causing nerve compression and pain. Occasionally, the clitoral branch of the pudendal nerve may also be engorged, resulting in a constant stimulation of the clitoris and persistent sexual arousal. For these patients, I perform ultrasound-guided sclerotherapy procedures to shrink the veins and reduce nerve irritation. In my practice, I frequently encounter patients who have been injured by pelvic mesh used to treat incontinence or prolapse. While most women who undergo mesh placement have excellent outcomes without pain or discomfort, some develop severe and debilitating pain. Typically, these patients suffer significant spasms of the pelvic floor muscles, which directly cause their pain. These spasmic muscles compress the pudendal nerve, the obturator nerve, and other nerves in the pelvis. I refer to this condition as pseudo-entrapment of the pudendal nerve to differentiate from the mechanical entrapment. Although symptoms are similar, the treatment approach differs, focusing on procedures to relax the affected muscles. The pain that arises sometime after mesh implantation likely results from inflammation, tissue shrinking, and tension in the muscles and surrounding tissues. Certain patients may be more prone to this inflammatory response, and early evidence suggests autoimmune component. In rare cases, a direct nerve injury from the mesh can lead to the immediate pain. Complete mesh removal is crucial, and our practice offers this procedure. Partial mesh removals rarely resolve the pain, and removing the remaining mesh after partial removal is significantly more complex than removing the entire mesh at once. If you have been injured by pelvic mesh, it is crucial to find a provider who can remove all of it in a single procedure. But even after mesh removal, many patients continue to experience pain, whether it's due to the muscle spasm or nerve injury. One significant advantage of being treated in our practice is our comprehensive approach. After mesh removal, we address any remaining muscle or nerve issues as needed. We prioritize comprehensive care, unlike other providers who focus solely on the mesh removal. Using this approach, I have helped numerous women injured by pelvic mesh, ensuring you feel supported and cared throughout your treatment. And this brings me to the most common cause of pelvic pain in both women and men, spasms of the muscles of the pelvic floor. These muscles located at the base of the pelvis can become tight due to various conditions. Symptoms include difficulty emptying the bowel or bladder, as well as pain during and after sexual intercourse. Pelvic floor muscle spasms are frequently seen in patients with endometriosis, pudendal nerve injuries, mesh-related issues, pelvic congestion, and interstitial cystitis, among other pain conditions. As part of treatment, I address pelvic floor muscle spasms, 
using muscle relaxants, botulinum toxin injections, and most importantly, pelvic floor physical therapy. At the Arizona Center for Chronic Pelvic Pain, I collaborate closely with our exceptional physical therapist, Tiffany Rosandi. We assess patients experiencing pelvic pain together, and this collaborative approach is particularly crucial when determining treatment plans and possible surgical interventions. Today, Tiffany joins me to provide insights into her role within our practice and how our teamwork significantly benefits our patients. Hello, my name is Dr. Tiffany Rosendi, and I'm a pelvic health physical therapist here at the AZCCP clinic. Here at this location, I collaborate with Dr. Hibner to better diagnose and treat patients with pelvic pain. As he is trained in a medical lens and I am trained from a musculoskeletal perspective, our assessments complement each other well to better determine if a patient's pain is coming from muscle spasm, nerve dysfunction, or some other disease process. I look forward to helping you on your journey. Allow me to introduce our amazing practice manager, Drew Nunez. I've worked with Drew for over 10 years and she's the one who made our practice so successful. Here is Drew. Hello everyone, my name is Drew and I'm honored to be part of an amazing team. With over 20 years of experience in healthcare, I am passionate about ensuring our office runs smoothly and efficiently. My goal is to enhance our patient's experience and support our dedicated staff in providing the best care possible. To best reach our office, you can contact the office at 480-599-9682 or email clinic at az ccpp.com. For any billing inquiries, you can reach our biller Janelle at 877-669-6927. I am thrilled to be part of Arizona Center for Chronic Pelvic Pain, and I'm eager to contribute to our mission of delivering exceptional care. To conclude, I sincerely hope that you consider the Arizona Center for Chronic Pelvic Pain as a valuable resource for yourself or your loved one. With my extensive experience spanning over two decades, I'm committed to assisting patients dealing with this challenging condition. We see patients for all those conditions listed here. You can get more information on our website. The link is below. On our AZCCPP website, you'll discover a brief questionnaire designed to assist you in determining if our center is right fit for you and your needs. Feel free to explore and reach out if you have any further questions. You'll also find details on how to reach out to us and schedule an appointment. I'm also delighted to share that I've authored a book titled Management of Chronic Pelvic Pain, a practical manual. This comprehensive resource published by Cambridge University Press addresses chronic pain in women, offering practical guidelines for assessment and treatment. While the focus is primarily geared towards medical providers, many patients have also found this book useful. This book can be purchased from Amazon or in our office, and if you already have a copy of the book, feel free to bring it along and I'll make sure to personalize it for you. We provide telehealth visits for patients from around the country and around the world. If procedures are necessary, they can be performed either at our office in Scottsdale, Arizona, or at the hospital adjacent to our office. Additionally, the procedures are available for our European patients in Warsaw, Poland, where I travel three times a year to operate. Prior to the visit, we kindly request that patients complete a more detailed questionnaire and narrative describing the nature of their pain, location, and other symptoms. To ensure optimal preparation for your visit, please submit this narrative at least 24 hours in advance. If your pain began after surgery, particularly if mesh was used during the procedure, I will need to review the operative report. Additionally, if any mesh was removed, please provide the relevant operative reports to our office before your visit. Thank you for reaching out to the Arizona Center for Chronic Pelvic Pain. We empathize with you and we are sincerely sorry that you or your loved one are, ex are experiencing it. Please know that we're fully committed to doing everything within, within our power to provide help. If you have any further questions or need additional information, feel free to contact our office. Thank you.